Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I need to get some work done in the cut flower garden. I think I have about three or four trays of transplant that I wanna get in ground. And I figured it's a good time to give you an update on how things are doing in the cut flower garden. If you're new here, my name is Rose and I garden in the Pacific Northwest Washington State Zone AB in about 40 minutes outside of Seattle. So right now it is mid-June and normally by now we would have our typical summer weather of high 70s, low 80s, sunny, clear, dry days. Unfortunately, it's been raining, cloudy, and the weather has been cooler, which is unusual for us. And so the garden is kind of growing a little unusual. It's not progressing as fast as I would have expected. So this is the cut flower garden area. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of green growth on the left side, but as we move to the right, not a lot of things are growing. So I'm standing at the entrance of the cut flower garden and down each side, I have lavender growing. This one is white lavender. I don't remember the exact variety, but these are doing really well. So this year I cut the lavender all the way down and hopefully that will help the plant be more green and less woody. And I'm seeing that to be really true. However, by cutting it all the way down, I think I am sacrificing the height of the bloom stalk. As you can see, they're pretty small, which is okay considering that these are only about a year and a half, two years old, but I was expecting them to be a little bit taller. And so I'm wondering by cutting these all the way down, am I sacrificing the height of the bloom? Because essentially I wanna do cut these lavenders for use in bouquets and maybe even drying. So I would prefer them to be a little bit taller. And then the white little blooms that you see are alyssum and these are all volunteers. I let I had some alyssum plant in here last year and I let them go to seed and over winter and all the seeds spread out very nicely. And then because only the alyssum right here survived, I did take some volunteers and transplant it over to that area. And these ones are doing well too. My goal is not to have these look absolutely perfect this year, but hopefully these will reseed in the following year. They'll be nice and full. In this area, I direct seeded a bunch of batcher button seeds in late summer, early fall. There are some that are really short, some that are more medium height, and then some that are taller. And the ones that are slightly taller are already putting off blooms. The ones that are a little bit shorter, not so much. And then down in here, I transplanted some sapiosa seedlings, and these are doing well. They are just growing a little bit slower. As you can see, these are all the ones that I transplanted. They have more of a diagonal pattern. But if you come in over here, these are some volunteers. And these ones are slightly a little bit bigger. This one is about 18 to 2 inches, 2 feet tall. These ones are about a foot tall, 6 inches in there. But the ones that I did transplant, they're maybe 4 inches, if that. They're a little bit on their shorter side. And then I have a bunch of lilies that are doing really good considering I have a current lily disease problem in my garden. So I am waiting for these to put on blooms. And so far it looks like these bloom heads won't be affected by the lily disease. Unfortunately, I can't say that for all the other lilies that I have in my garden. If you walk into the garden, I have a little pathway that goes to the left. And last year I planted a lot of apricot agasashi, I believe it's called, or it's called apricot sprite. And so they overwinter beautifully. I only lost a few. So I lost that one right there and I moved the volunteer into a space. And it seems to be do doing okay. It's not taking off as well as the other ones that overwintered. Lost another one right there. Move the volunteer into that space. And same goes right there. I lost one and I put a volunteer in its place. And these have put on quite a lot of growth since last year. I think this year I'll be able to cut some bloom stalks off of here. Last year they were too short, I didn't cut any. And then we have the backside view of all the bachelor's bun that I direct seeded in fall. And there's definitely bunnies coming to eat my bachelor's bun. You can see a lot of it has been kind of chomped down, which was not a problem that I had last year. I have some volunteer cosmos. I planted cosmos in this area last year. So there's just a couple spread throughout the walkway not as many as I would hope and they're already blooming but unfortunately these are quite tall or quite short they're about 18 inches tall then I have some what I believe are snapdragon volunteers in there and then I came in and transplanted some columbine so you can see they're already flowering there there's one right there super tiny and then a couple right there 
The seedlings were pretty sad to begin with. I had started them a long time ago and they just sat in their cell trays way too long. So I'm not expecting much from these columbines, but hopefully by this time next year, they'll do a lot better. And then behind it, I have some sunflowers that I transplanted. And unfortunately, my sunflowers are getting eaten down, which wasn't a problem I had last year. Last year, I planted a bunch of like mammoth, desert sun, um, some other orange varieties. I didn't have any issues. This year, these are hybrid sunflowers and they're just being eaten down. So I had to put some in cages and that seems to be helping. The other thing that's unfortunate is they're already putting out bloom heads and these are very short. They're maybe 14 inches tall, if that. They seem to be putting on a little bit of height even after they're blooming. Like this one is about two feet tall and you can already see the nice yellow color in there. So yeah, I was hoping these would be a little bit taller, but they're quite small, so I don't know what's going on. And then all this green that you see here is volunteer snapdragons. I had snapdragons planted in this area last year, but unfortunately it had a thrip issue. So I cut all the snapdragons down after they dried and pretty much went to seed. And then I have some plants, not quite sure what that is. So it looks like it's gonna put out a bloom head. So I'll just let that bloom and see what it is. And then this plant here, I did not plant this. So I did a little Google search and it says it is silene. I was thinking these are part of my bachelor's button. The foliage looks almost pretty much the same. And I'll try to put a picture of what it looks like fully open. So I'll let those be and use those as cut flowers if I can. So on the other side, towards the back, I have another set of lilies. This one is called Must See and this one is pretty interesting. They're a little bit different than what you would normally expect out of a lily. There's lots of little flowers and some of them are creamy white and then some of them are yellow. So these ones also have a little bit of lily disease on them. Not as bad. I just wanted to let these go and see how the blooms do and the blooms don't seem affected as much. But I can tell you that these blooms were not as big and beautiful as they were last year. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for it to fully open and then cut it down. And then we have another varieties of lilies right here and these ones are about to open. Then you can see a lily beetle right there. I have spotted a handful of lily beetles in my garden. And then in the back we have the hydrangeas. So that one was completely eaten down. I caged and that one's doing a lot better. Then these ones I put on quite a bit growth. I removed the cages because once it gets to this size, the bunnies don't really bother it. So at this point, I can remove the cages. You can see all the hydrangeas. These are limelight. And then in between these lilies, I have calendula that I transplanted. So you kind of see them throughout the lilies and stuff. So my ideally, I want to cut these back so that the calendula can get a little bit more light. Ooh, it looks like I have a snapdragon that's getting ready to open. You have calendula all in through there. And then here, that is lavender that's been there for two years. So I actually need to move that to a different area because I came in and planted a whole nother variety of purple lavender. So this is the entrance and then we have a circular opening and then along the inner circle is all purple lavender. We have more lilies. This one is almost as tall as I am. I'm 5'5", five five, so this one's probably about 4'5". Signs of some lily disease. More lilies. And then in here, I transplanted some straw flower and they're just, they're just growing very, very slow. More lilies right here are probably going to end up moving these because you can see they're kind of stretching for the light. So once these bloom, I'll probably end up pulling the bulbs. And this is where the lack of growth starts to happen. So I initially cleared out this area of all the diseased lilies and tulips. And so I planted snapdragon, transplanted snapdragons along the side and they're putting on growth. This is very, very slow. You can tell the ones that I started indoors are farther behind than the ones that are volunteers. And then I came in and transplanted a bunch of celosia. And unfortunately, they're just, they're getting eaten down. So I'm not really sure what to do. And the ones that are not eaten down, it looks very poor. They're just yellowing. They look like they lack some nitrogen. So might have to do a fertilizer feed and then here I direct seeded a bunch of dill seeds and they're growing they're just growing absolutely slow I have some volunteer straw flower I believe more celosia the ones that have survived most of it got eaten down I planted a nice big drift here and they're just gone more volunteer straw flowers and then these ones are a little bit more spaced out or transplanted that I put in and then I have bachelor's button that I seeded late spring early fall and these ones are definitely farther behind. And then we have some paper moon scabiosis that I transplanted. 
and they're finally putting on some growth and then here i also have more purple lavender unfortunately one didn't make it so i'm thinking the one that i would need to move i'm actually just going to put right in here i think it'll blend in just fine we have some volunteer lupins i had lupins planted in this area last year but unfortunately they were taken over by powdery mildew so i just ended up cutting them back so I have a number of volunteers. There's one kind of in there. I don't know if you can see. But a lot of the volunteers I took and planted them in this area. They're starting to put on some good growth. They're pretty tiny for a while. Dusty Miller that I planted last year. I had five and only two came back. Then more purple lavender. And these are a year old now. And the bloom stalks are quite short. And then here I have some yarrow that I transplanted. And then we have some daffodil leaves that we need to cut back. So we are back on the entrance. And on this side, of course, we have the white lavender. And then we have some volunteers growing in between it. And then the day lilies behind it are starting to put on some blooms here pretty so shortly. So looking forward to that. That is growing out very nicely. So that is the cut flower garden. As you can see, there are some things that are putting on a lot of great growth, especially, especially the perennial. Those seem to be doing really well. The annuals, not so much. So hopefully in the next month here, when the weather starts to get consistently warmer, I can see those put on a little bit more growth. But I have some transplants that I need to get into the ground. So let me go get those real quick. So I have about three full flats of seedlings that I want to transplant. And this one right here is mostly celosia. And with all of my celosia being eaten down, most of these aren't probably going to make it. Which is interesting because I grew some last year and those weren't eaten down. So I don't know what's going on this year. Things that normally haven't been eaten down are being eaten down this year. So it's a little frustrating. So celosia, I believe that is status. And then we have some cosmos here. These are zinnias. More celosia. Alright, in this tray here we have black wheat and i actually had ornamental wheat in this one but it got all eaten down as i was hardening off so i i don't know this has been a frustrating year and then we have sunball crispedia here and here we have calendula this is gumfrina and this one in the back is hungarian hot wax which i am not going to transplant here but yeah some of my seedlings are doing really great and some are just doing really poorly I'm just having a hard time keeping up with everything so it's just best to get these in the ground. I'm not going to show me planting these. I have lots of video of me planting in the cut flower garden. I will link some of them down below. I really need to put a playlist of the cut flower garden together so hopefully that will be up as well by the time this video goes out. So I'm going to get these planted real quick and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. I decided to just do it right after I plant it because I'm going to be doing so many I'm going to lose track of what is what. So right here is the double dutch rose these are cosmos and i just transplanted them in between the batcher's button that i seeded in the late winter early spring and as i was down here i weeded whatever i could but i noticed that a lot of these batcher's button have like blackening of the leaves so i'm not exactly sure what's going on this was an area that i had lily and tulip disease so maybe that's affecting the batter's button, why it's not growing as quickly as the other one. And in this area, I planted the double click Cosmo. And as I was down here, I was looking again at the batter's button and I realized that a lot of these have been eaten down. So that's why it's not putting on as much growth as I was hoping to see. So again, the bunnies has just been a real issue. So we are on the other side of the batter's button. This side is along the walkway. And I decided to put the zinnias along the edge here. I was saving the space for something else, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get to it this year. So I decided just to put the zinnias here. But unfortunately, as I was planting the zinnia, I disturbed a ant's nest. So I'm not sure how the ants affect the flowers, but I may have to treat for the ants. All right, so I planted a big swath of celosia all the way up until like right about there. And so I had coxcomb, rainbow sherbet, pompous plume. A lot of the root balls on these were really non-existent. So... I planted them a little bit closer just in case some of them don't take. So this is where I transplanted the zinnia right along the walkway. And then if we walk down a little bit more, I had a little bit of opening here. So I planted what I think is Russian status. It lost its tag, so I'm not exactly sure. But it's the ones that look like these little stars. So continuing on for what I believe is the Russian status, we have the ornamental black wheat. And then continuing on, we have Sunball Crespedia, which is this right here, very tiny. And I just planted those in this area. Again, moving down, you're not going to be able to see it. We have Gomfrena, that little pinky purple that you see right there. There's some right there. 
very tiny. I don't expect it to take, but nonetheless, I planted it anyways. So I only had a few calendula, so I just stuck them where I already had the calendula planted. So there's one right there, one back there, and then one right there as well. So I have some volunteer list of them right there in the pathway. And then if we come down this way, there's some more right here. I wanna see if I can get those transplanted and move them to the other side. Here I do have some alyssum that I transplanted. Not very many, so I wanna definitely get more in here. So I got all the alyssum pulled out and they pulled out really nicely with nice root systems. So I have them all transplanted in and I'm pretty sure these will continue to take off. So I'm gonna get the whole area watered in and I'll be back. All right, you guys, that is it for this video. I am officially be planting three flats of seedlings, little tiny seedlings and getting up and down, up and down repeatedly. Definitely is tiring. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.